Brandon, I'm coming to you next because you very rarely smile on the football terrace. <laughs> Listen, to, I agree with you. I think we should all be happy uh, that we won the game. It's Aston Villa away. It's not an easy game. Uh, like somebody pointed out, they're going to be a thorn in, in many you know top teams' sides um, this season. And we always knew it was going to be difficult. It's nice to get that you know, off your back kind of thing. It was one of the games that cost us uh, the league last season. Um, so, it's you know, it's nice to get a win over them. Two out of two is what's important, though. You know, it's not even the fact that it's Aston Villa. It's the fact that we've won two out of two, you know. And I expected us to win two out of two anyway. I expect us to go to Brighton next week and win, you know, because that's what you have to do. You have to, you have to maintain the standard if you have any chance of winning this league against Manchester City. Right, so I'm very happy, very happy. I think somebody else has already pointed it out, but I'm going to say it anyway. Leandro Trossard has to start from now on. Um, I think it's time for Martinelli to hold a hold bench for a little while. You know, I think he has to earn his way back into that left hand position because it's not just you know Trossard's performance today, but Trossard outperformed Martinelli massively last season. You know, Trossard. People forget because he come off the bench so often. Trossard was our second top goal scorer last season. And a lot of the time he come off the bench. You know, he, he played nearly 400 minutes less than Martinelli. And he scored double the amount of, uh, uh, of goals. Had a high impact in the Champions League as well. I think this guy is mad disrespected and, and forgotten about. He's kind of the forgotten man, do you know what I mean? But I also look at him as well. And I think he is definitely our most clinical finisher across the front three. And that includes Bukayo Saka as well. Bukayo Saka is very clinical, but I think uh, Trossard has that natural instinct, you know, that we've been missing. And uh, he, he has to start from now on. Martinelli has to earn his way back into the, uh, into the team, I think. And I think Mikel Arteta would be very silly to start Martinelli in the next game. I think it's all about building confidence in players that are performing and, you know, allowing the players that are not performing to, you know, hold the bench a little bit and have to work their way back into the team. That's how you build competition. So, you know, Trossard has to start. I am going to talk about the transfer window. I know is this AI are... or is this Brandon? Like, is this really Brandon? This... Like... I am going to talk oh, about the... No people don't want to do right? But... Let me tell you so why, right? I I don't want to don't want to say this hair. way, right? I don't want to say this and come across <laughs> way because people call me negative and all the rest. I believe that we have a massive, massive opportunity, even bigger opportunity than what we had last season, to win this league this season, right? There are a few pieces that are missing to the puzzle, right? Now. I was one Arsenal fan that was calling out for... Brandon, you were doing so well, bro. Oh, man, you were doing so well, bro. Please, Kunde, <laughs> let, me, just let me speak, yeah? Let me speak. I was one Arsenal fan that was calling for the defensive line to be strengthened because all it takes is for William Saliba, Gabriel to get an injury and all of a sudden, you know, we're in big problems. So bringing in Calafiore, very happy with that. Also... We know last season that we struggled in terms of the eight role, not necessarily replacing Granite Xhaka. I think Mikel Marino coming in is your Granite Xhaka replacement. It remains to be seen whether he is as good as Granite Xhaka or better. Completely different players. Completely different players, but they play a similar role. Yeah, mm. they, they play eight positions. So, you know, we'll we'll see how that we'll see how that unfolds. But also, right, Arsenal fans. At the end of last season, there was a question that was going around, right? After Arsenal uh, finished the season against Everton, the question that was going around was, what does Arsenal need in this summer transfer window in order to overtake Manchester City next season? Every single Arsenal fan on the planet said striker. Oh. So why now am I hearing... It's actually Arsenal? very 50-50, though, because a lot of people said wingers as well. Oh, oh. Let me speak, and then you and then you can come in afterwards. I, I, I'm fine if you if you disagree, that's fine. Everybody said striker or attacker or forward or whatever. Arsenal get done that. So I don't know why there are some Arsenal fans out there now saying we're going to win the league. We're going to win the league after two games, right? 
also, when Giuseppe talks about striker, there was some elements to today's game where I agree with him and I say, not necessarily a wide forward, but a striker, somebody with that natural instinct, right? Because there was a moment in the first half in particular, Kai Havertz didn't have much, um, didn't have much service today, but the one opportunity that he did have when he made that late run beyond the defence, right? Even though it's a tight angle, if that's a natural finisher, if that that's a natural striker taking that into his stride. He don't cross that. He shoots, right? That's the difference there. Kai Havertz hasn't really got that natural finishing ability. So instead of shooting from that position, he decided to cross the ball instead. Also, on top of that, I hate to say this as well, but I still see some mental frailties from these players. And what I mean by that is... Ollie Watkins had two very, very good opportunities today. David Raya with a fantastic save. And he was, apart from uh, Trossard, who would get all the plaudits, he was our um, standout player today. He was very, very good. The rest of them, I thought, were reasonably average to their standards. Do you know what I mean? But what I say about the mental frailties is it took for Ollie Watkins to nearly score before we woke up and decided to start playing football. Apart from that, it was very slow, very lethargic, very passive, especially in the midfield. And that's that's what I mean by the mental frailties. Why don't we just start these games and play in the same way that we played in the last 15, do you 20 know, I do, I do hear that, but do you know what it also is down to? It's, I, there is a reaction, and it's, it's sometimes hard to explain unless you play sport at a high level. But you know they always say that, when you score a goal, you're at your most vulnerable from conceding. I think the same thing happens sometimes when you come close to scoring. Because what happens if the Villa crowd got up, the players got up, I think they then committed a bit more forward. Oh, we've got Arsenal here, which then led to you guys getting more space. Up until that point, my view on the way Villa played today was they were very negative. They sat behind the ball. They didn't really press you that often. They did, they did occasionally. They nearly got a goal from it, to be fair. But they were quite negative. But whenever they had an opportunity, what you then saw from them is they, they opened up and they actually then gave you a little bit more space to attack into as an example. So I think part of it was you guys reacting to those moments. But I also think an element was it they thought, we've got Arsenal on the ropes here, so we're going to go for the kill. That then, just like mm -hmm. in fighting, they then opened yeah. up and the jaw was there and you man landed a big right hook on it. I, I, def I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. Something about that, bro. Um, no, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Just, just, just <laughs> emphasise the point about Martinelli as well. Matty Cash goes off early. He's their first choice right back. I believe the guy that they brought on was making his debut, was he? He's, he's only a young lad. Didn't test him once. All of a sudden, Trossard comes on and, and we're causing all sorts yeah, of problems. Yeah. Right, no, so I agree. M Martinelli, I think... Martinelli, Brent. Brent, Martinelli looking... It reminds Watching him play just reminds me of watching Rashford. It's almost, yeah. why are you not running? At your biggest asset is your speed. Of a, you know, run at people, commit them. Even if you don't get past them, you're better off trying than passing it backwards. It is weird. Like there was that opportunity where he was, he, it was quite early in the game and he was one-on-one -on -one with whoever the fullback was or the defender. And I'm thinking, oh, Martinelli will try and skin him here. And he just sort of like rolled the ball over his, like under his foot a few times and then passed it back. And I was sitting there thinking, Martinelli, 18 months ago, just runs at the fullback. Ironically, Rashford did the same thing three times today. And I'm looking at it thinking, the fuck has happened to you? That's That for me is a mental issue rather than a physical. There's no way he's lost his speed. It's just, it's almost like I don't want to make a mistake. So I'm not going to try it. He's lost a second quite speed. Sad to watch. Or half, a half second speed. He, he, you can see, you can see he's lost, he's, he's lost some of his speed, bro. You can, you can, you can tell he has, but the, the, the one thing, the one thing I want to say before I go into just you my thoughts. He's decisive right, yeah? now. That's what it is. No, that's not even indecisive. Bro. I think, I think now, I don't think he gets enough assistance, man, on that side. If you look at if you look at the Saka side, bro, and you look at how the Saka side is situated, bro, and you look at how everybody is in. Bro, the why side, you want people to hold people's hands? God, no, no, but it's not even about holding. No, 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 no. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because 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 listen, half half the three quarters. No, no, hold on, half half the three quarters of our fan base here are actually they've they've let this guy just go 
and they've just they've just said, oh, it is what it is, bro. Arteta sacrificed his side. It's fine. It's fine. Martinelli is all good. Martinelli is this, Martinelli is that. But with, with, with hold on, Terry, with Trossard, Trossard's got that experience. Trossard is an older player, bro. So you know he's got that experience to be able to get out of those opportunities, bro. Martinelli is still a young kid, bro. We're acting like this guy's an experienced player. He's played in the top level for years. Nah, and he should hey, not have to sad, get out of that, bro. He, he sad, doesn't get that 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 I, I understand, I understand right. a little bit because, because of the way Benoit overlaps and Timber and whoever else inverts. However, why does that stop him running at his man today? No, no, but there's also... he's got He's at fault. Also, I understand that he's at fault, but I also think a certain degree is to a certain degree, he's also been not allowed to, to, to really do his thing, bro. Like he doesn't get the overlapping runs anymore. He doesn't get somebody going through and just giving him that run. Sometimes you need yeah. that run for somebody to drag the defender, bro. Somebody to take the defender away from you so you can maybe right make a run inside, bro. Saka gets that assistance from Erdegaard and from and from uh, Ben White making the overlapping run. But yeah. listen, I, I just I I, I think what, drop, 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 drop Declan Rice for, drop Declan Rice from a technical <laughs> player then. Well, I think we should try and <laughs> we should try <laughs> different the answer. We should try different Hold midfield on. partnerships because I don't think oh. Rice can do that. To be honest, I don't think he does that enough. To but be you want to drop and Rice think... to get the best out of Martinelli? Yeah. No, no, but try different. But, but can I just say this? Maybe yeah. use Rice Who? as a six. Who? Maybe what? use Rice as a six and use Marino as the eight, bro. You could you could do different yeah, but stuff. But like when you talk about you Martinelli, can... right? Yeah, this when you talk about Martinelli, this first half, right? When we when we're actually analyzing the game, that first half, yeah, all the attacks were going on that left, right? So you can't tell he's had time to go and attack his fullback. He's but he's, he's, if you look at him, he's no, left there by him. himself, bro. To to just but, go at the attacker, bro. Like I understand he should be taking him on, but hold on. If, like, if he's one v one, I'm saying if he's one v one with his attacker, you're expecting your attacker to run at him. We complain about Saka being double triple marked. When Saka's one v one, we expect Saka to go and burn that man. That that's a yeah. reality. And when he doesn't, we criticize it. So mm. when when Martinelli's been when the ball's been switched over to Martinelli and he's got his young fullback here, remember this guy's inexperienced. Matty Cash has come off. He can run at his fullback. He ain't running at his fullback. He ain't burning his his fullback. Mm. Right. And, 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 Nate, and where you're right as well. If Saka's being if Saka's being double and triple marked, that must mean that Martinelli's free as a bird, bruv. Because you can't double and triple mark them both. That means no one's on Odegaard, and that ain't true. So I get where you're coming from, but it. He's just not performing. It, 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 uh, and yes, elements. Yes, if you had someone of Odegaard's technical ability on the left-hand side with him, granted, you may get a little bit more out of him. But equally, mm. Martinelli's nowhere near as technically gifted as Saka to yeah. make that interplay work. So, Martinelli is speed. Speed and cutback, speed and shot. Like, there isn't a huge technical ability in him. I, I don't think I'm being disrespectful. Yeah. Which I think you know, he can learn. He, he can learn. He can get that technical ability. But, he, but, but the issue is it, bro, he hasn't got it. It's just, it's just at the moment, bro, he hasn't got it. But listen, I, I just, I just, sorry, I, I didn't know if you wanted to shout them out, Tell. Sorry, I don't, that, don't know if he can, he can, he can uh, learn. Yeah, I want to shout, so yes, want to shout out Do uh, Dodgy Bill for giving out some free memberships. We're going to come to your got, super chats in a minute. So stay with us and make sure you're hitting the like buttons as well. Uh, Nathan, what did you make of today? We'll come back to the points in a bit. Bit, Jen, just gonna want to get super chats in here, but uh, Nathan, what are you saying, bro? Yeah, man, I, I thought it was a good well, I thought it was a good result, a great result, actually, considering we got points there last, you know, I mean, last season, but right? I never got not, any, not never got any points against them last season. So, for me, in isolation, when you look at the results, it's a fantastic result. You know, going to Villa Park is going to be a tough, a tough place for anybody to go. You know, they defend deep, they've got, you know, I mean, strong, really strong athletic midfield in you know, Onana and Rogers, who, who were a handful for part. Today, I mean, I saw Rogers take party, um, take pie and rice for a walk on many times and send them to the shops. Mm. So it weren't it weren't a pleasant viewing today, but we dug in. You know, Trossard mm. comes in, makes a difference twice, and then one player I really want to shout is Raya because for me, one of my biggest criticisms of Raya last year was that I didn't feel like he contributed to match winning saves. Like I felt like he he was very proactive in everything he did. And that was really good. But he never had the same kind of impact that Ramsdale did when there were chances on goal. He never really won us a match with you know, his reflexes or his shot-stopping ability. And I feel like the first two games of the season, we've seen that. You know, He made a really, really strong save against Wolves and then again today. So I think he deserves a lot of credit because that game could have been completely different had that chance gone in from Watkins. And all in all, I think, look, man, when we look at the result in isolation, I think we've got to be ecstatic because like I said Villa Park is 
has been a mixed hunting ground for us. Emery's has a really good set of results over Arteta as well, like their record. I think mm. Emery's mm. got a better record over Arteta at the minute as well. And I feel like we're still trying to come into things. I think Moreno's going to be definitely be a big player to to play a part in the system. And I feel like him when that left in that left eight and maybe putting Declan Rice will be a significant upgrade because I don't think Rice gives us that fluidity in that eight position in terms of receiving. I think he's more of a, a destroyer and a, a ball winner as opposed to being somebody that can, you know, pick passes and, um, you know, play other plays in and create. And that's essentially what you want from Nate, you know. But all in all, it's, it's when you consider the fixtures that we've been given so early on, and that the transfer window isn't closed, and we haven't managed to bring everybody in. I think it's a. I think we can be very happy to to cross that one off the list so early off in the season because I don't think mm. I think as the season goes on, I think Villa are, are a team that's already going to get stronger under Unai Emery. They're probably players are going to get used to that system because they brought in a lot of players themselves, right? So mm. they're they're also you know merging, kind of getting to terms with what Unai Emery wants. I mean, Onana's coming for. Um, uh, Douglas Louise, who's a it's, it's a big shift and change for both for both you know the player it and is. everything. So. Uh, having 